what I want you to consider in terms of take home point number seven is this difference between personal distress and empathic concern may make a huge difference with climate change behavioral alterations, right? So if a person says, oh my God, you know, I'm a part of this planet and the planet's falling apart and we're all gonna die and it's no good, my grandchildren are never gonna have it, the world's gonna be horrible, forget all this. Let me just have a good time because as you probably know, you know, when someone realizes resources are limited, they don't just say, oh, let me conserve them. They gather them up because they want to get them before the enemy gets them, right? So it isn't as simple as you think, oh, just in in inform people about this. It's got to be a way where people feel like they can actually have a positive outcome. And in terms of these lower structures, maintain emotional equilibrium. So now we rise up to the cortex, okay? So if you put your fingers over the top, and the way this works is the person's face is in front of your fingernails, and the frontal lobe, which is from your last, uh, second last knuckles forward, is something that got enlarged in primates. But the back part of the brain is generally, this is a gross generalization, but just for remembering it, for perceiving and making maps of the outside world. Forward of this midline area, this hair area here, is the frontal cortex, where you control your body and your actual action, what you do voluntarily with your limbs, is this first strip here, the motor strip and the premotor strip, right there. So when you literally say, what is a person doing, whether they recycle or they don't recycle, it's this area here that's going to do it or not, the motor strip and the premotor strip. But the premotor strip, interestingly, right here, where you plan what you're doing, is very much connected to this prefrontal area. Now, the prefrontal area is where we have thinking and where we've moved far enough away from the physical world where we have abstract notions like, right and wrong and justice, freedom, love, compassion. So all the studies of the brain, imaging studies, show that the capacity to consider the welfare of another person is driven by these prefrontal areas. The way that we, in fact, have self-awareness, prefrontal area. Even, amazingly, an awareness of our body, even though it's a physical entity, is in the prefrontal areas, not in the back of the brain where you have perception of touch, for example, is here in the, in the somatosensory strip. The interior of the body is all forward. So this take home point number eight is this. Whatever we can do to cultivate the development of the prefrontal cortex is what we mean when we say we want to awaken people's minds to the importance, let's say, of climate change or of being kind, or of having compassionate connection with their own children. It's a prefrontal awakening. So then you can say, well, hold on, well, then what's the prefrontal cortex about? The prefrontal cortex has a number of regions that, that we could talk about later on in the discussion, but just to say that one of them that's up here is where we think we mediate literal awareness right now. It's called the chalkboard of the mind. But these areas that are down here, there are a bunch of areas here, and obviously I'm just, this is not, this is not an accurate neuroanatomical drawing with little round dots, but just for your memory's sake, I once presented something, actually a few months here at Garrison, and this neuroanatomist came up, she goes, I think this dot should be there. <laughs> I said, are you kidding? She goes, no, it's like there. I said, okay, whatever. <laughs> this is just for memory's sake. So anyway, the point is, these areas, which I'll just name briefly, the anterior cingulate, the orbital frontal, the medial prefrontal, and it was out a little bit, the ventral lateral. These are all a part of an area called the middle prefrontal cortex, which I write extensively about. This guy here is the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, where we have working memory, dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex. They're different, and here's the key thing I want to just drive home as I get ready to conclude. Reflective practices, like meditation, insight meditation, or I have a whole set of things called the mindsight skill training where we do this thing called the wheel of awareness where you have um, a kind of like a, a, a hub in the center and a rim on the outside and a person goes through a practice of being aware of the first five senses, for example, that bring in the outside world, the inside of the body called the sixth sense, a seventh sense, which is mental activity, and even, and here's the key thing for climate change in this model, a relational sense where for kids, we're doing this in schools, you teach kids in a reflective practice that they are not isolated beings, unlike what our culture seems to make us think. It's a lie. 
that you have them have this eighth, I call it the eighth relational sense. And the hub is where you have awareness, the rim is that which you're aware of, and what this does is it liberates people from the personal distress that's manifested in vicarious trauma that Jonathan was talking about, but for a child, they can then be within the hub and just sense that from the rim is coming a distressful thing, oh my God, the planet's gonna burn up and everything's happening with climate change and all that, and instead of being flooded by it and then their subcortical areas, everything below the cortex is called subcortical, so body, brainstem, limbic area, all subcortical. All these subcortical things say, oh my God, oh my God, this is terrible, 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 and they get away from it. They don't want to think about climate change. With this practice, what it does, literally developing the hub is what a kid experiences or an adult when you do the wheel of awareness practice. They get aware of their first five senses, sixth sense of the interior of the body, seventh sense mental activity, eighth sense I'm connected to a much larger whole. I'm, the earth is my home. This is where I live. I'm an interconnected, fundamentally interwoven part of a whole family called planet Earth. That's the eighth sense. You have them do that just as a, as a matter of course. And what I think is the neural equivalent of that mental experience of subjective internal metaphor of the wheel of awareness is this. You are building the strength of the middle prefrontal areas to do three major things, and I'm going to stop. Number one, this area allows self-awareness to develop. And the amazing irony of reflective practices is that as you develop this capacity, just in the metaphor of the wheel, to have more attunement to yourself, this is the important word, self-attunement, you actually start dissolving what Einstein called the optical delusion of your separateness. And ironically, the more you become very in tune with yourself, you realize the notion of, in my case, Dan, is just an illusion. That in fact, we are all a part of this interconnected whole. So reflective practice is the opposite of self-indulgence. It's self-liberation, right? And this, I believe, needs to be taught in every school. And I've been teaching that we have to have a program called No Prefrontal Cortex Left Behind. Because when, when you do this, when you do this, the prefrontal region is able to see the truth. Because the truth is we are all interconnected. All right, so that's number one. Number two, this area of the brain, and, and studies on reflective practice show these areas get thicker, actually can regulate the subcortical distress. And you get a thing called name it to tame it. So in people who develop these things called mindfulness traits, which we can talk about in the discussion, you actually can show how there's inhibitory peptides that are secreted to calm the lower distressed areas down here. The final thing I just want to say, the third thing, and then I'm going to stop, is that as you do middle prefrontal development through contemplative practice, through reflective practice, if you want to just get away from any of the mindfulness words, mind sight practice, mind sight is the ability to see and shape the internal world by tracking and transforming this flow towards something called integration, which we haven't even talked about yet. But, but ultimately, what I believe happens, and all the studies suggest is true, that when people do this, then they start making not only me maps, you know, maps of me, but I start making you maps, so I become more empathic. But then I start making something we can call we maps, where I realize we are actually in this together. And when you do that, compassion and kindness become as natural to an integrated prefrontal cortex and this person's membership in the larger family as natural as the breath is to life. And that's the potential to actually awaken our huge family in this, on this planet to the importance of our working together to really preserve Earth. Thank you very much.